And subhanAllah, the next day Jibreel came to the Prophet ﷺ, this time in his human form. And he came to Rasulullah ﷺ at the time of Dhuhr. The command of prayer has been given to him. So he came to him at the time of Dhuhr. And the Prophet ﷺ said, فَأَمَّنِي فَصَلَّيْتُ مَعَهُ He led me in prayer and I prayed behind him. And he came to me at Asr and did the same thing. Maghrib, Isha and Fajr and did the same thing. Then he came the next day at the end of those times and led me again and then told me that the salah is between these two, that your window of time is between these two prayers. Each salah is to be prayed between those two timings that we prayed together. And subhanAllah, it was, it was common knowledge amongst the companions actually. This is an interesting historical fact without going too far into it, that some of the companions thought the Prophet ﷺ led Jibreel in salah. And it became a point of contention. And Umar ibn Abdul Aziz settled this debate in his home as the Khalifa. Because Urwa ibn Zubair was the one narrating all the ahadith. He said, I'lam ma taqul ya Urwa. You better be sure of what you're saying, O Urwa. And Urwa went through all of the different chains of narration where the Prophet ﷺ said, Ja'ani fa'ammani. He came to me and he led me in salah. فَصَلَّيْتُ مَعَهُ The same way that Jibreel came and showed the Prophet ﷺ Hajj and he did Hajj with him, he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he taught him the Salah step by step, each and every single step of the prayer. And subhanAllah, the prayer would develop gradually over time, obviously. Right? When the Prophet ﷺ was praying towards Al-Aqsa for 18 months or so, and then they were switched towards Mecca. And Jibreel alayhi salam, he came to the Prophet alayhi salam, and the Prophet alayhi salam, he said, what happened to all the other, what, what happened to all the other prayers though? And Allah revealed what? وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِعِ إِيمَانُكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to let your faith go to waste, your prayers go to waste. Just something very interesting here, very very cool that you might not have thought of. Do you ever mention Jibreel in your salah? Do you mention Jibreel in your salah? All right, let's go through the different ways that you could possibly mention Jibreel in your salah. When the Prophet ﷺ would start his prayer, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was asked, how did the Prophet ﷺ used to start his prayer? And she said that one of the things that he used to say, especially in his tahajjud, the Prophet ﷺ would say, Allahumma rabba Jibreel wa Mika'il wa Israfil, Fatir al-Samawati wal-Ard, عَالِمَ الْغَيْبِ shahada Until the end of the du'a. It's a long du'a. You can find it in Fortress of the Muslim. In fact, if you go to Google and you search Lord of Jibreel, Mikal and Israfil, you're only going to get two du'as. Alright, so just search it. Okay? So the Prophet ﷺ would make a du'a in the beginning of his salah, mentioning the Lord of Jibreel, Mikail and Israfil. How about in ruku' and in sujood? Bowing and prostrating. This is interesting because we're about to go to Salah right now. So I want you guys to try to remember this. Do you mention Jibreel? In fact, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned Jibreel in every single ruku' and in every single sujood. Subuh, Quddus, Rabbul Malaikati, Warruh. So you glorify Allah, the Lord of the angels, and specifically, Ar-Ruh, Jibreel ﷺ. And Aisha says the Prophet ﷺ never did ruku' or sujood, except that he said it. Some of the scholars even considered it wajib. All right, it's a minor opinion, but that's how often the Prophet ﷺ used to say it. Some consider it even mandatory. What about in your tashahud? So we've covered starting the salah, ruku', sujood. What about in your tashahud when you're sitting down? Listen to this hadith. Abu Salama radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, he says that the Prophet ﷺ, when, when he saw us after we were taught the prayer, he said, we used to say in our tashahud, when we sat down, As-salamu ala Allah, As-salamu ala Jibreel, As-salamu ala Mikail, As-salamu ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So they would send salam on Allah, Jibreel, Mikail, and then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alright? The Prophet sallallahu came to us and he said, as for Allah, who was salam? Allah is a salam. So instead say, At-tahiyyatu lillah, wa salawat wa tayyibat. There's, there's some uh, people that think that this was a conversation. So there is actually no authentic narration about this being a conversation. 
It may have been or may not have been, but it's not really established in any hadith whatsoever. The Prophet ﷺ said, look, instead say, Attahiyatulillah, greet Allah with your prayers, with your good deeds, and greet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other ways. You can't say, Assalamu ala Allah. And you can say, Assalamu alayka, ayyuhal nabi. So you send, you send salam on the Prophet ﷺ, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillah salihin Peace be on to us and on the righteous servants of Allah. You know what's amazing? The Prophet ﷺ said, when you say, Ibadillah salihin the righteous servants of Allah, it will reach Jibreel, it will reach Mikail, it will reach all of the inhabitants of the heavens and all of the inhabitants of the earth who are righteous servants of Allah. So when you say, Ala ibadillah salihin you're actually making dua for Jibreel as well. You're sending salam on Jibreel as well. Finally, when you finish your prayer, Aisha radiallahu anha says, and this is the second of the two du'as that the Prophet ﷺ used to say, Rabba Jibreel. The Prophet ﷺ would say, Allahumma Rabba Jibreel wa Mika'il wa Israfil, a'idhni min harri nar wa adhab al qabr. Protect me from the punishment of hellfire and the punishment, the heat of hellfire and the punishment of the grave. So there is actually a mention of Jibreel ﷺ in every part of our salah.